They wanted to make him king so that he can be their endless bank account and food bank. Anytime they want food, they go to Jesus. Anytime they need anything, they know where to run. And of course, there's power in him to work miracles. So when he realized that the Bible said he withdrew himself from them and he snuck away into a boat and he crossed over. Well, the disciples rather he sent over and he went thereafter after he had sent the people away, he dodged and he left them. And then in verse 22 of chapter 20 through to verse 40, Jesus began to explain to them that the bread and fish they ate, the food they ate, he is the real deal. Yes. He's the bread who came down from heaven. Yes. He started to tell them about how their fathers in the wilderness they ate the manna and God rained manna for them for 40 years. God was miraculously feeding them manna. Jesus said, that's not the true bread. I am the true bread. As a matter of fact, I am the bread of life who truly came down from heaven. God has given you the true bread in myself as a person. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they're all dead. But the one who eats this bread, me, they will never die. Verse 49. And he says, this is the true bread that came down from heaven. I am the living bread. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forevermore. The bread that I should give is my flesh, which I should give for the life of the whole world. They became confused and discombobulated. So they began to quarrel, verse 52 say among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They're thinking he's saying you need to cannibalize me in order to live. But Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has, currently possesses eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. Jesus is talking here in figurative terms. But their minds were so stuck on focus on material things that they could not see through what he was saying. They could not understand the spiritual import of his word. So he says, whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life and they will experience a resurrection. Can I submit to somebody today? I, I love food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's testifying, she's agreeing. Ms. Amanda love me food. It could be jerk chicken, fricassee chicken, stew chicken. It could be the Trenton, curry Trenton, crawfish, crab, lobster, mackerel. Mean a business. As long as it's food that's edible, give me food. Are you listening to me? Yes. I love to drink stuff too. Christmas gone already, but if you have some sorry, you can't give me new. It's the ticket. It could be a soda, water, you name it. But I want to let somebody know today that irrespective of how important it is for us to eat physical food and drink physical beverage or beverage, we need Jesus much more. Amen. The same way physical food keeps us alive is the way Jesus keeps us alive spiritually. We could be eating the best food that this world has to offer. 
We could be enjoying the five star food at Ryu, mm -hmm. Decameron, and all of the other hotels in Jamaica. But I want to let you know, church, that all of those five star foods and delicacies cannot keep us alive eternally. If we want to live, if we want to be sustained, if we want to possess eternal life, we need to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Again, he's not talking about cannibalism here. He's talking about entering into a relationship with him and, and personalize him. Just as how the physical food sustains you, Jesus ought to sustain you spiritually. And can I tell somebody that had it not been for the goodness of God and Jesus miraculously keeping you, 2020 would have taken you out. Oh, yeah. Had it not been for the goodness of God in your life, Lamentations chapter 3 informs us that you would have been consumed long time. 2020 would have beat you down. It would have chewed you up. It would have spit you out and walk all over you. But you're here today by the goodness and the mercies of God. It's because Jesus has kept you. It was not food that kept you. As important as that is, it was Jesus. It's not the police that kept you safe from harm and danger. As important as they are, it's Jesus. It's not the burden of ours on our doors and our windows that kept us and secured us. It's Jesus. It's not our health that sustained us and kept us and strengthened us and allowed us to another day, another year. We are told in Acts chapter 17 that it is in God in Him we live and move and have our being. He sustains us in our weaknesses. He sustains us even when we don't know Him. He sustains us in our hardships. He sustains us as His children. If you will have eternal life, you need Jesus. If your life will have any sort of meaning for your life to go anywhere, you need Jesus. In John chapter 15, he says, Abide in me and I in you. Without me, you can't do anything. And if you don't abide in me, you're going to wither away like a branch and you're going to be thrown away and burnt. You need Jesus. Are you hearing me, church? Above the internet, we need Jesus. Above your gadgets and your phones, you need Jesus. Above sex, you need Jesus. Can I talk to somebody? Above attending school and getting a good education, you need Jesus. Above food, clothing, shelter, and room, and a job, and, and, and security, and anything. says unless you internalize me unless I become the very blood that flows through your veins you will not have eternal life and so he engaged in a long back and forth with the Jews as he sought to explain his identity my flesh and blood, they are true food and true drink. And who, who abides in me by eating my flesh and drinking my blood, I will remain in him. As the living Father has sent me and I live because of the Father, so he fe who he feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate manna and they're all dead. He who, he who eats this bread will live forever. I'm quite sure we all want to live. But more so we all want to live forever. And Jesus says here, the only way that's going to happen in the way that you would want is to have that relationship with him. To internalize his teachings, his principles, his philosophy, his, his 
ministering to recognize who he was. And he was in the synagogue, verse 59, saying, why he made this statement. Then verse 16 now says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? Jesus is speaking too cryptic for them. So when he knew that his disciples were complaining, he said to them, is this also offending you? Do you find it offensive that I'm saying that I'm the bread of life? And just as he said to his disciples, many people today find Jesus' statements, his rules, and his laws to be offensive. The New Age movement, how they, they are angry with Jesus saying he's the only way to the Father. He said that in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except me. They are vexed with Jesus. They are offended. So they don't want people to teach that in schools. Many are offended that Jesus says marriage is between one man and one woman. And one woman. Can I tell the church? We soon will reach when you are reaching. You know, but I have to build a foundation first. Yeah. We're going to get there. They're offended. That mm -hmm. he says one man, one woman. It's not two women. It's not two men. It's not a woman and a dog. Or a woman and a cat. Or a man and a mannequin. All of these things that happen in various parts of the world. You know? Yeah. People are marrying on computers and toasters, all the kind of stuff they're marrying. Mm -hmm. In America, Canada, Germany, and Japan, all kind of stuff are happening. They're offended that Jesus would say marriage is between one man and one woman. Yeah. Many are offended that he would disavow of so many unhealthy and unwholesome stuff. They want to do just as the disciples here were offended. So Jesus says, what then if it should be that I should go back where I come from. Since you're offended, would you be pleased with me going back to heaven and leaving you all on your own? Would that suit you much better? Then he says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Many are trusting in their flesh. Mm. But I want to let somebody know that the flesh will, flip, uh, will profit nothing. Yeah. That's why the psalmist says in the Old Testament reading, some trust in horses. Yeah. Well, let me correct it. Why if you tell me I say it wrong? Some trust in chariots yeah. and some in horses. Yeah. But as for us, we will yeah. remember God. Why did they trust in chariots and horses then? You see, horses and chariots provide safety and confidence to win battles. If your horse was fast and strong, victory is almost guaranteed. If your chariot is well built, it can hold several men with swords and bow and arrows and shields to defend you. And if they became so smart, they realized that if they put some, some sharp swords or spikes at the wheels of the chariot, when they ride through, the sharp object can cut the foot of the horsemen or the horses and therefore are showing quick victory. And the longer they kept the horse and watched the horse in battle, they could be of confidence in the horse. And so you have Jabin and Sisera in Judges chapter 4 who had 800 chariots of iron. You have the Egyptians, the Amanica, the, the Ammonites, the Amalekites, the Moabites, a lot of them had chariots and strong horses that constantly perplexed the children of Israel. But the Psalmist David says, irrespective of how sure and confident and efficient these things are for battle, we will trust in God because horses have limitations. If they're too hungry, they can't run. Can I talk to the 
lying in my room table. If they're sick, they can't help you. If you take on the charioteer, who drives the chariot? The chariot is useless. But our Lord Hallelujah. is above all sins. Our God is above chariots. He's not affected by anything. The rain don't affect him. The terrain won't affect him. Food not gonna affect him. Strength not gonna affect him. He's always there. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in times of trouble. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But give me God. Chariots will fail. But God will never fail. Money will fail. Jesus not the fail. Hurricane can mash up the house, but Jesus will always be there. Spouse will die, but Jesus remains. Children get old and they move out the house, but Jesus stays with you. Let them trust in horses. Let them trust in chariots. Let them trust in materialism. But give me Jesus. Can I tell somebody? Give me Jesus. Can I encourage somebody for 2021? Take Jesus. Why Jesus? Keep Jesus. Jesus says the, the words that I'm speaking to you. Amen. They are spirit and they are life. You need me. Internalize my words. Let, let them sink in your spirit and do the work that they should. And then he says, but there are some of you who don't believe. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking very clear. And I'm explaining, but there are some of you among me who, who do not believe. Can I tell the church the sad reality that it's not everybody who's in church or who say Jesus believe in him? It's not everyone who is around Jesus and his people who believe in Jesus, who are changed by Jesus. It's not everybody who in ministry is cut for ministry. You see the situation here, majority of the disciples were following Jesus because of the miracle he had done in multiplying the loaves and the fish. They were following him and staying close to him for material security. And today there are many people who God no call. Them call themselves to God and to church ministry. Yes. Because they think they can get material security from the church. True. Can I keep it real church? Yes. It's not everybody who's preaching about Jesus knows Jesus. Yes. It's not everybody who reads the Bible to extract a sermon or transformed by the teachings and principles of the Bible. It's not everybody who calls themselves pastor is submitting to Jesus, the true pastor. Can I talk to the church? It's not everybody who's in the church or of the church. It's not everybody who's saying Jesus mean Jesus. It's not everybody who's among the saints or the saints of God. There are many people in the church of God from the top Who are nothing but hirelings. Who just want to be among God's people. For financial security. For marital security. For access. Sound like me a bridge too hard, man. Am I saying too much hard stuff? It's not everybody who say Jesus means Jesus. And that's why after a while their true nature and character begin to show. You see, they can hide and pretend for a year or two. 
when they just get into ministry or church life. But as soon as time goes by, their true nature begin to show up. Where you see they're all about the materialism of church ministry. They only care about platforms. They only care about putting on a show. They only care about being invited to make even some preacher and the teacher. The little ones ever would never remunerate and no one that. They only care about the end of the month when the check is to come in. All the Jews are like, can I talk to the church? Don't fool yourselves. It's not everybody who's a part of the body of Christ are in it for the right reasons. Some people are looking a quick hustle. Some people just want a little ease of life. Yeah, man, I just want to sit down and have title. No, no, no work. And just collect at the end of the month. These disciples and many of them were following Jesus for the material things that they thought they could have gotten. And today, many persons are doing the same. They latch on to Jesus. They latch on to church. Because of what they think they can get. But they don't really care about God's people. Oh. They don't care about the saints. They don't care about those who they can see God has called and who are anointed for particular tasks and assignments in the church. As a matter of fact, when they see them, they get offended. They get grudge, grudgeful, ready eyed They want to hold them down. They want to tear them down. They won't project all their bad traits and characteristics on the person. Can I talk to the church? It's not everybody who is trying to align with Jesus. It's for Jesus. So he says, I know there are a lot of you who don't believe. Many of you, you can't eat in my face, but it's just the fish and the bread you want. Many of you who are following me, PB Clock Club, you're not following me because you really want to be forgiven of sin. You want to be transformed. You want to be saved or want to be a better person. You want daily security. You want when you're hungry, I can just rain my the same way. You want when you're hungry, I can just make ways out of no ways. You want when you're hungry, I can just feed you. There are many who want to attack. Jesus for the wrong reasons. Church for this new year, don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. Because eventually all that materialistic stuff can leave you empty. It's going to leave you dry. It's going to make you miserable. What is life to have everything and not have Jesus? What should it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What good will it do for you eventually to amass all wealth and knowledge and this, that, and the other and still lose your soul in the end? So Jesus says, some of you here in the belief he knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, verse 65, Therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father. To come to Jesus, to be changed by Jesus is a work of God. Our hearts are sinful and wicked. We don't want God. We don't desire God. We don't desire anything that is good. So when we come to Jesus and we're truly converted, our heads and minds are in the right place. All glory to God. You can't do it. No one can do it for you. God is the one who does it. And that is why the psalmist says to search me, O God. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And he said in another place to purge me with his own. 
I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me unless God does a work in your life. Your life will be empty. It will be meaningless. It will come to nothing. And you will get yourself tied right up in a lot of mess. And so it continues. In verse 66, from that time, notice from that time, when Jesus started to drop some hard truth on them, many of his disciples went back and they walked with him no longer. Many went back to their farms. They went back to their families and their homes. They went back to their businesses and professions. They went back on their hustle. They went back to see who else they could swindle. Can I talk to the church? Yes. You need to sit up and let me talk to you now. Yes. They went back to pursue the pleasures of the world. And so Jesus, uh, verse 67 says, Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Peter being the spokesman for the disciples and said unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, when we contrast the actions of some disciples with Peter here, Peter is saying, Give me Jesus. Let them go back to their businesses. But give me Jesus. We have come to know. We have come to understand that you are the Messiah. You have the words of eternal life. And there's nothing else to go to. There's no one else to go to. We are stuck with you. So about going back to be a fisherman, give me Jesus. The church of God this afternoon. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus for 2021. I don't know what it holds. I don't know the challenges I'll confront. I don't know the enemies that I'll have. I don't know the imperfections and the weaknesses and the downfalls I'll face. I don't know if I'll get sick. I don't know who might die in my family. But Jesus, give me Jesus above the food. Give me Jesus above decency of a home and a brand new car. Give me Jesus. Can I talk to the church above all peace and safety in the country? May I, Jesus, above driving nicely and having jobs left, right, and center. May I, Jesus, above tremendous peace in the church and everybody likes you. Give me Jesus. May I, Jesus, where should I go? You have the words of eternal life. Give me Jesus. Above having a very long marriage. Hallelujah. Above having a peaceful and long marriage. I love my wife. Everybody knows that. We together for 13 years now. Almost 14. Married for 11. But no matter what. We confront and challenges faces, and what kind of temptations come? Me not dis my wife, me not disrespect her. Me not go cheat on her. Me not go put hand on her. I want to give her a happy life. I want us to be happy and enjoy life together to the fullest. But above that, give me Jesus. Because one day my head might check. And I might do something and mash up the marriage. Her head might trip and she do something and mash up the marriage and we mash up. Are you listening to me? Yes. 
all one of us might die before we expected the marriage might dissolve. But Jesus, hallelujah, will still be here. Above having the best family, give me Jesus. Above being able to travel left, right, and center, give me Jesus. Are you listening to me? Because planes will, things will go wrong with them. And countries will lock up and you can't travel again. But you still will have Jesus. Hallelujah. Above having a lot of fine clothing to wear, and I like to dress up and look nice. My wife can't tell you. Forgive me, Jesus. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Because you might get too fat or too small for your clothes and they can't work for you again and you have to give them away. Yes. Or they might burn up. Little bleach might catch them and they can't wear again. They might dry rot and they can't wear again. But then something not happen to Jesus. Are you listening to me, church? Above having your children under you all the time, give you Jesus. Why Jesus? Because the children will go, but Jesus will remain. Above having food to the full, and you have your stack up with food, you need Jesus. Are you listening to me, church? Give me Jesus. Above a great employment that's paying me a lot, me want Jesus. Jesus, above a stellar career, give me Jesus. Because anything and everything in this world will fail. But Jesus will never fail. They will go away. But we are told in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, he's the same yesterday, today forevermore. We are told in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 he says, "Lo, I'm with you always to the end of the world. In Hebrews 13 verse 5 he says I will never leave you nor forsake you above parents sticking around. Give me Jesus because Psalm 27 verse 10 tells us when father and mother forsake us the Lord and as important as they are, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Because when I'm thirsty, he'll give me water. When I'm hungry, he'll provide food. When I'm lonely, he'll keep my company. When people are threatening me, he protects me. When I feel like I'm about to lose my mind, he'll give me peace. When I don't know what to where to go, he'll be my advice, he'll direct me when my back is against the walls and I can't turn left, I can't turn right, can't look behind, my head is pointing, I can lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence comes my help, my help comes from the Lord, when I'm weak, he'll give me strength, in Isaiah 40, he says, Those who wait on the Lord shall we give me Jesus. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint above police guards and officers to protect me and my home. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Because they are subject to the elements. But the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord surrounds those who fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord give me give me Jesus 
Jesus. When people don't give up on me, he not give up on me. When they can't help me, he can help me. Give me Jesus. When I'm miserable and life is spinning out of control, he'll be there for me. He'll take the wheel to stir it back in line. Give me Jesus. When things get frustrating in the church and the hypocrites want me left church, give them Jesus the King. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. When I'm tempted to steal, get involved in premarital sex, I'm talking to you. I'm referring to myself, but I'm talking to the whole of you. Whatever situation fits you, Jesus will keep you. When I'm tempted to, to take my own life, because only for pain and stress that on the end. Yes, yes, yes. Give me Jesus. He'll keep me. He'll preserve me. When the enemy comes in like an overwhelming flood to devour me, give me Jesus. He'll protect me. In Psalm 90, we are told, Psalm 91, rather, the one who dwells in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of Almighty God. Give me Jesus. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve your soul. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the hour that flies by day. A thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, your habitation. Give me Jesus. When I'm a teenager, give me Jesus. When I reach into a young adult life, give me Jesus. When I reach my prime and leave in it, I still want Jesus. When I get old and need a king to help me get around, give me Jesus. When sickness is ravaging my body and comfortably, Doctors just give me an X amount of time to live. Give me Jesus. When life has beaten me to a pulp, and I feel like I don't want to give up, nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, no one to call on, give me Jesus. When life gets frustrating beyond manageability, no matter where you try, no matter how hard you fight, how much tears you cry, how much discipline you are, it just now work out for you. Things now work out in the time you want to do. Give me Jesus. Fernando Ortega has a wonderful song today. I love to listen to so much. My wife is going to come and sing it for you. He says, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Give me Jesus. When I am alone, give me Jesus. When I come to die, give me Jesus. Because if I did not have Jesus, church, I don't know where it would have been. If it's not crippled me somewhere, if I ain't lock up somewhere, if me had an ancient of the man already, we would have dead already. Give me Jesus. When society didn't give up on you and then call you junk or a workless dog, you know, come to nothing. Jesus takes you 
and he turns trash into treasure. Give me Jesus. When you barely graduated primary school and high school, but Jesus can take you and send you to college and university. He'll still be there. 